Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Kim Sandberg and I'm Denise Dowdrick. And we are coming to you live today from the Handy Quilter Education Studio. Actually, sorry, not the education studio, the filming, filming studio. studio. It's been quite a while since we've been in here, hasn't it, Denise? It has. I'm 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 really excited to be back. Yeah. We've had a lot of exciting things happen this last month. We had our big academy, our big conference, and we are super excited to get back to yeah. Uh, our normal schedule and filming. So we were looking at what's coming up, trying to decide what we we're going to do today. And our quilt along, we are, this next month is all about binding. So by the end of this week, if you're doing the following along with the quilt along, you should be done quilting your quilt top. Um, you know, of course, we've got a little bit of a grace period in there, but uh, July is all about binding quilts. So that's what we're going to talk about today, right, Denise? That's right. What what perfect weather to bind than in June and yeah. July? <laughs> well, you know what, though? I love, so for me personally, I love to do a binding where I can do some hand stitching so that I can have, you know, an excuse to sit and watch Netflix for a few hours. Oh, absolutely. In a nice air conditioned house. I see nothing wrong with that when it's hot. No, not at all. And I will say I might bump my air conditioning down a few more degrees when I've mm -hmm. got a big cozy quilt on my mm -hmm. lap and I'm binding. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's take a look at some of the different choices that we've already made for some of our quilts for uh, ways that we've bound them. So first of all, Denise, we've got your quilt hanging here behind us. And which I'm, is finished. Yes, Yay. it's finished. I'm so excited. That might be its name. Finished. It's finished. Um, and what did you choose to do? So you chose so, to do something a little special a here. A little special, but it's actually quite simple, which we'll is do a little bit why of I did it. I didn't really have enough fabric to do a traditional binding. So I did a faux piped edge. And actually, Mary Beth talks about it on our blog this month. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in on the comments, um, yeah. that link to that blog. And you can see how it's done. It's really quite simple. It is. But it has a nice big impact for such a simple process, really. And it's all done by machine. It's so cool. I love that, how it just... That special, that extra little pop of color right there. Yeah, so. it, I think it really adds a lot. And and as a bonus, it hides all the imperfect points along the edge of my quilt. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> I always need to know about those. I always love, love that. Yeah. So so, but it really just adds a nice little punch. Um, yeah without taking away from the quilt. So that's really nice. There's lots of other different ways that you mm -hmm. can finish the edge of a quilt too. I've got one here in front of me that's just a really small one. And I actually did a facing. And uh -huh. I know, Kim, you like doing facing on yours yes. as well. Um, yes. It's a nice way to finish the edge of a quilt when you don't want to do a traditional binding. Yeah. Um, for example, I've got this little quilt here that I didn't want binding to take anything away from the edge of my quilt. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the binding is almost flipped completely to the back yep. and then it is stitched down. So I've kind of got a wider area that is um, covering the edge of the back of the quilt, but there's no binding showing on the front. So a faced quilt is a really good choice if you've got an art quilt mm -hmm. or just something where you don't want that binding, adding that extra element of a frame or something like that on a quilt. Exactly. I, I chose to do facing on my Seeing Stars quilt. Uh, one of the things I love about it is how that the quilting design just wraps around the edge. It does. There's not a hard line around it like normal binding does. Um, sometimes you want to put a frame around a quilt mm -hmm. like yours, and especially with the piping uh, with that extra color in there, yeah, it really does it. create a frame. Mm -hmm. The faced edge, it's definitely a little bit more of a modern look. Also, just to know, it's something, and, and I don't know, I, I don't know if you've ever done this, it's something I only do on quilts that are going to be wall hangings. I have never done a face binding on a quilt that's actually going to be used because it's just not quite as pretty from the back. I agree. And and with a facing too, I do hand stitch those mm -hmm. on the back side. Yeah. So my added my added comment there is I do it with small quilts because yes. I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of the hand stitching. Yeah. I try to always finish by machine if possible because it's much faster for me. Um, but yeah. small quilts, wall hangings, they're they're not the prettiest from the back side, but it does what it needs to do on the front. And that's the goal with a facing. Exactly. It gives it gives that that finished edge that you want. So let's talk about just traditional binding. So there's lots of different ways to put the traditional binding on a quilt. Mm -hmm. You can 
you can take the quilt off the frame, trim it, you can put it on with the machine, you can stitch it to the front and then flip it to the back. You can stitch it to the back and then flip it to the front. You can do decorative stitches. I mean, we could go through a I ton of different and ways. On. I, and I've done them all. I've done them all. Exactly. And I've done, you know, the hand stitching on the back mm -hmm. with little clips. Um, Kim knows my little secret here. I glue. love to use glue. <laughs> Me Elmer's too. glue on the back of a quilt, just yeah. a thin little bead of mm -hmm. regular cheap school glue. Yep. And then you hit it with an iron and it just dries it right in place. The nice thing is I can wash that later mm -hmm. and it will wash the glue out when I'm done. But yep. that way when I'm hand stitching, I don't have any little clips getting in my way. Mm -hmm. um, but it also holds it in place for machine stitching, which yeah. is really, really nice. Yeah. So. I love it when I'm trying to be really precise with my bindings, which depending on the project, sometimes I'm a little more precise than others. The glue, the glue is the key because you can make it, that binding lay exactly where you want it to. You can. And so, and I know there's other products out there like um, the Appliquit glue where mm -hmm. it has a really fine nozzle. Yes. So you can really just direct a little bit. So whatever glue works for you, but experiment and try with them. Yeah. Try different ones. I've really enjoyed doing that. It makes the job much faster. Yeah. So. And, and um, another little tip on that. We have this big bucket of projects that we pull out whenever we do <laughs> retailer trainings here. I have a quilt in there that I did in, I believe it was 2019, glued down the binding, still haven't stitched it down, but the binding's still where it should be. So. Yeah, I, I actually have a quilt touring the country with a little exhibition <laughs> that was glued down because I didn't get around to the hand stitching. And yeah. I'm like, oh, it's still holding up. Beautiful. I saw it at a show about a year ago. It's still holding up. Awesome. Time, so I'm like, okay, good. So if you're not planning on actually using the quilt, um, like as a, tr you know, to wrap up in or whatever, just hanging it on the wall, the, the glue, the glue can help you out does in more trick. ways than just keeping that binding in place so you can stitch it. That's right. Now yeah. I'm sharing all my little I know. secrets here. So <laughs> <laughs> ways to get it done. So now something that binding has in common um, across different quilts is it always just starts with a strip of fabric. Yep. And this is a binding that we prepared here for Emily's. Here's a sneak peek of, sneak peek of Emily's um, Scene Stars quilt. She is our um, guru and designer extraordinaire for pro stitcher patterns. Yep. So she did the challenge as well and she quilted some lovely designs. We'll be showing um, some more close-ups of this quilt um, next month. Yep. So I'm really excited. And in the meantime, um, I volunteered myself to help her out with the binding. So she provided some really fun fabric. Yeah. And then she told me she wanted a two and a half inch strip traditional binding. Okay. So I went ahead and cut strips and I'll even show you where I joined them together. Yeah. I measured the perimeter of the quilt, added a few extra inches and I mm -hmm. cut, I don't remember if it was five or six strips. And then I actually piece these together on um, a 45 degree angle, mm -hmm. trimmed off the excess, and then I press that seam open. Yeah. And that way when it's folded over and pressed again, it lays really nice and flat. So, and, and you can do whatever size bindings you want. I've done two inches all the way up to three inches, depending on the width that you want. Um, I don't actually remember the math to the exact formula, but Obviously, a narrower strip will give you a narrower binding. Yep. But I do have a little trick when I am measuring to see how wide I should set my seam allowance. Uh -huh. I know I'm going to stitch on one side, and then I'm going to flip it over, and then right. over it again. Yeah. So I fold it in thirds Okay. and just kind of give it a little crease. And then I can measure that little bit or just set my needle right there. That's my oh, seam allowance wow. right there. Okay, and, I have never seen that before. What a great tip, yeah, Denise. Yeah, it's just, well, you know, it doesn't require any fancy tools. Yeah. So, you know, it's like any any way to simplify something, mm -hmm. I'm going to figure that out. So, and and I did measure it out one time. I think it ends up being a three-eighths inch seam allowance. Okay. So, you know, a little more than a quarter, but yeah. it's less than a half. But it's just a great way to make sure that you get a consistent wrapped edge. Right. So, and, you know, it compresses it a little bit. Um, if you're using a thicker batting, a thicker batting is going to give you, um, you know, a little more oomph in that mm -hmm. binding and fill it out a little mm -hmm. more. So I would probably set my needle just over to the shallow side of that That's okay. mark a little bit. And that way it would fill that binding completely. Um, but, you know, just a little trick. 
That's so, great. so this binding was all prepared. Okay. And Emily asked me if I would stitch it to the back side mm -hmm. like this. Okay. And then she wants me to flip that over to the front and okay. then just machine, just a straight machine um, stitch along the front. And I thought, sure, no problem. Oh, it's easy. really easy to do. Yeah. Um, if you have a domestic machine with decorative stitches, that's mm -hmm. a fun place to pay, play with decorative stitches too. Yeah. So this won't take long to bind at all. So okay. really fun little quilt. Um, today I thought I would share something using the Amara ST though, because yeah. I know a couple times we've shown how easy it is to bind on the long arm right. on the frame, but I wanted to show you, we can do it on the ST as well. And a real advantage here is all of this throat space yeah. that we have. And then I even have the extension table on right now too. So that is pretty great. So I have all of this extra space. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that out of the way. Perfect. And I just brought over a small project. I prepared binding the same way. So just that two and a half inch strip. I know a lot of people like um, two and a quarter inches, mm -hmm. whatever you like, whatever yeah. works best for you. So I do a two and a quarter when I'm going to hand stitch it. And then I like to do the two and a half when I'm gonna machine stitch it. It just gives you a little extra insurance, little, right? Yeah, that little bit of wiggle room. And mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I like doing the same thing, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I've done here. I've put my square foot on. I okay. love the square foot for doing binding, whether you wanna use the quarter inch or the half inch. Um, and on this project, you can see, I didn't trim away any of the batting. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is on the ST, we have these little sensors underneath. So I wanna keep the sensors cover or uncovered to show you, but I wanna keep those covered while I'm stitching because that ensures that I have good stitch regulation. Right. So just that extra binding or the extra batting I would have there when I'm quilting anyway, I'm just not going to trim it off. And it's really nice because it saves me a step later mm -hmm. on. You know, I don't have to trim it twice, so to speak, so. That's true, I didn't even think of that. That's so true. So I'm gonna put my little gloves on here. I do like having the gloves on for mm -hmm. this because it just kind of helps me hold onto the quilt. Yep. Um, spoiler alert, I'm doing this quilt backwards, you might've noticed. I was gonna get this quilted <laughs> earlier in the week and I'm still kind of recovering from Academy and I didn't get it quilted yet, so. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bind it first and then quilt it later. We'll see how that goes. We I was gonna say Stay we tuned. we can admit to that uh, all of our machines from the education studio go to Academy with us, and they are all actually still sitting downstairs in, downstairs in the warehouse in a staging area. So Waiting we actually haven't had our machines come back. That's right to stitch with. We had to bring up the ST just special for filming for today. filming today. Okay. So something else I really love about binding on the ST. Mm -hmm. So I'm setting up my binding along the edge and I'm just laying that up against my mm -hmm. edge. And I did go through and I stitched the edge down. Okay. Um, now I could just put that underneath and start stitching across, mm -hmm. but I don't have to. On the ST, I can move my quilt yeah. really easily. And so if you like the orientation of doing it like you're on your domestic machine, mm -hmm. this is the perfect opportunity for that. Yeah. And then another little cheater here I like, since I'm gonna be stitching up to the edge and then turning the binding like mm -hmm. I would on the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and just pre, just press a little oh, fold there. Smart. And that's gonna visually tell me where I stop. When right. I hit that crease, that's where I'm going to stop. And I'm going to go ahead and get started about here. I'm leaving a tail back here so I can join up my binding later. And I am eyeballing on this um, half inch foot, but what I could do is I could mark a line on the quilt to help me stay light up, mm -hmm. lined up. Um, I could even put a mark on the bottom of my foot with a little bit of tape, painter's tape yeah. or something like that if I wanted to, but oh, good idea. you know, let's face it, we're quilters. I can yeah. totally eyeball a quarter inch. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm going for here. So I do wanna bring up my bobbin thread first. And we'll just get that up. And I used a nice blending thread for the quilt, but it has high contrast on the binding. So I can see what I'm doing. I just can't pull it up with that glove on. There we go. No, it's a little hard. I When I bind, and this is gonna sound so weird, but when I bind, I actually 
wear a glove on my left hand, but not on my right hand. So that I, I can I do completely like get that. that. I completely get that. Um, that totally makes it sense helps to me. even even when I'm doing it on my domestic machine because that just that extra grip from the glove it helps me um, keep that fabric on track. It really does. Okay, well let's start stitching. I'm just okay. watching that um, foot for guidance, and on the ST, I need to guide the fabric instead of like the frame mounted machines where you're moving the machine. So, exactly. And I'm approaching that crease that I put in there. So I'm going to stop and I'm just going to stitch off diagonally right there. Oh, perfect. And now I'm just going to come off to the side and now I can do my little fold. Just like with traditional, just, just like, like putting it on, yeah. on your domestic machine. But look right? at all how the, look at all the space I have to yeah. do it. So. That's really nice. No, it's, it is really great. And the extra lighting too. I don't know about you, but sometimes if I'm doing a binding, especially if there's a lot of the same color going on yeah. there, it can be hard to see exactly it really what can. I'm doing. And I like to bind at night sometimes because I'll be finishing my project mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm not going to bed till this is done. It's gotta be done. So I'm just gonna come back over here. I'm just kind of hopping over the edge and I'm gonna rotate my project. Look at that. And if you get caught up on the, the thickness of the binding in the corner, remember, this is actually a true hopping foot. Yeah. I can lift that. It's spring-loaded. So I'm going to just make that a little adjustment there. And I'm just going to backstitch a little bit and then just keep going. So Denise, as you're stitching on that, it looks like we've got a question. Okay. They ask about what about using a ruler to go straight? Oh, so the question is, what about using a ruler while you're doing this? A ruler what do you is a great tip. So mm -hmm. a couple nice things about a ruler is I can use square feet and rulers mm -hmm. together because it still has that nice high profile to work with a ruler. And that can really help me keep lined up here. Something I would want to check, though, um, just with the setup I have with the binding, if I have um, the handy grip on the back side of my ruler, it's going to get caught up. So with this situation, I might flip my ruler over mm. just to keep the handy grip from getting in there. Or I could put blue painter's tape over that handy grip just to keep it from sticking to the batting while I'm working. But that would definitely help me do a nice, straight, even binding. So that would be a really great tip. This is a great idea. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up okay. so I can just show that corner right there. So you've got a nice, oh, look at nice that miter. little miter here. So if I trim all of this away mm -hmm. here, I can flip that whole thing over and there's my perfect great little miter. Look at that. And I can hand stitch from the other side or I can just flip it over and then come back and machine stitch the other side down. Um, I could do that with the ST. I could mm -hmm. do that with my domestic machine. A little project I might actually just hand finish. So. Yeah. Um, it's just, it works really, really great. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you showed everybody that because we do, like we mentioned before, we have showed so many times how to do binding on the frame with, with one of our long arms. And I think people kind of forget that you could do that with a stationary machine too. Uh, some people are probably thinking, oh my gosh, it doesn't have feed dogs, but mm -hmm. guess what? You just move the fabric yourself. It's, it works. That's it right. works. That's right. And for my quilting space right now, I have just a really limited amount of space. So in order to use one machine, especially if I want to put the extension out on my ST, I can't have my sewing machine set up at the same time. Yeah. So rather than put the side arm down, get out my domestic machine, I'm just going to do it all right here um, because I can. Yeah. You know, it's really easy having the tools. I also love on the ST, I've got my little magnetic collar here, mm -hmm. keeps track of my scissors because um, on my domestic machine, I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> digging for it. And then my domestic machine doesn't sit flush in the table. So oh. I have this really nice flush surface, um, makes it so easy. And with this extension, I really just have all the room I need to play. It really makes it much easier. That's really great. So I have one little tip that, that goes from anytime you're binding like this and you're trimming after. You wanna be really careful when you're trimming around the corners that you don't accidentally clip the little, this little spot right here yes. on the binding. So I will actually take that binding and I will pin it down so that I don't accidentally cut right along this edge here when I'm trimming. That's here. a really good tip. Um, another tip I have for doing that is when I go back and trim, I'm not trimming flush to the edge of the binding. Oh, okay. I trim 
um, about an eighth of an inch out. Smart. What that does is it ensures I don't cut into anything at the corners accidentally, mm -hmm. but it also helps give a nice full yes. binding. So I don't have that scant mm -hmm. um, binding. I make sure that I've got batting covering all the way to the edge. So that's just another tip if you're waiting to trim the quilt until after the binding's on, it can really help you. I just line up my ruler. I still use a rotary cutter for it, but I line up my ruler not to the edge, but to maybe the eighth inch line. Out. I've even done it with a quarter inch if I want a really wow. full binding. So you're just cutting a little bit past there. Mm -hmm. That extra little um, bit of batting in there just really fills out that binding nicely. Makes it look really nice. Gives it a nice frame. Gives it the really does. A nice frame. Yes, it looks really nice. I love that. So those are those are great. Our binding tips for today. Hopefully, this is inspiring you to finish up your seeing stars. We are so excited to see what everyone's doing. I have seen lots of awesome posts on social media, seeing the different color combinations, the different sizes that people are making. Um, I yeah, I I want to make like three more of them now. I I've know. got like ideas. When I first started the project and first saw the pattern, I was like, huh, I'm just I'm not sure if I want to make that. That's a lot of half square triangles. <laughs> but And I was actually trying to come up with a way to avoid the half square triangles. I'm so glad I did them because um, when you look at the quilt behind us, I've got multiple different pinks in yep. there. I didn't have one shade of pink to do the yeah. half square triangles. I had multiples and I'm so glad I did it that way. I was a little worried about it, but I think it came together beautifully and it adds a little more dimension and texture to the quilt. And, uh, and it's finished. It's Yay. finished. It's finished. That's my favorite part of it. Well, I also love your focal fabric that you picked here. You definitely chose a fun fabric to pull all those shades of pink from. And it really, you know, I love, we had at Academy, we had your quilt, my quilt, Christina's quilt, and then Jen's quilt all hanging right by each other. And it was amazing how they all looked so different because of the different color choices we made. Different color choices and different techniques. I liked mm -hmm. on yours how um, you didn't end up using that really dramatic contrast for the little points. Like I used the navy blue. Yeah. You used a softer color there. Yep. So it blended and it changed the focal point of the quilt. Yep. So, you know, I loved seeing how they're all coming together differently. So keep those pictures coming yeah. on social media. We really do look at them and we're really enjoying the process. Yeah, we really are. So be sure to use hashtag handy quilter QAL for any posts that you're doing with your seeing stars. Um, and next month on July 25th, which is when our next live will be, that's when we're going to do the big reveal. We'll have the, I guess we've actually got five quilts here that are finished. We have Jen, Emily's, uh, mine, Denise's, and Christina's. We'll be showing you all of them. Uh, and then we also hope to have a bunch of your pictures to show too. So be sure to use that hashtag Q, handy quilter QAL. And if you'd like to have one of your quilts featured at the end of one of our watch and learn episodes, be sure and tag your post with ha hashtag handy quilter. We look through those every month. Well, actually every week, except for the week we, we, weeks we do lives and we pick pictures to feature at the end. Also, I just want to put a little bit of a teaser out there. So we've got a quilt that that uh, Christina, Denise, I'm calling you Christina That's okay, today. that's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> so here's a quilt that uh, Denise made recently. And this is just a little bit of a teaser of some upcoming ideas we have for a one of these lives. So be sure and always tune in. Right now, we're usually doing these on the fourth Tuesday of the month. This is uh, Denise's lovely portrait of Audrey Hepburn. I should have I should have asked them to say who is it in the comments. Oh so, shoot, sorry. But Spoil the surprise. In the comments. So what I'd like to do is do another episode showing my process for doing a portrait quilt. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you can all give me some ideas on who you think the next Ooh. person we should feature. I have a few ideas, but I'd love to hear from you. So add those to the comments and tell me maybe who you want to see featured in a portrait quilt. And I'll show you the process because it's very simple. It, that sounds great. Also, just to let you know, coming up, it'll probably be in August because we are all, we've been so busy with Academy and we've got a training coming up. And then we're going to take some time off in July. All of the, uh, the three of us educators are. 
then we are going to start planning our next quilt along. So we'd love to hear from you too, what you thought about the quilt along. Did you participate? Maybe ideas for what you'd like to do in the future. Just let us know once again in the comments. We want to say thanks for watching. And